Okay, here's the modified pulse width modulator box with the CPU cooler heatsink and fan on top of the box. Uh, you'll see how that the fan is mounted to the top of the heat sinks and I simply have it powered from the terminals that feed DC power to the pulse width modulator. I had something interesting occur as I was testing this the first time and I ended up blowing out the first fan that I had attached to, the, to this heat sink. And the reason it blew out is because the pulse width modulator was in full swing and uh, the peak currents that are that are being induced in the wires that feed power to the pulse width modulator were creating circulating currents on everything else attached. Now if you go to my schematic diagram and you look at R14 and C4 the 10 ohm resistor and the 47 microfarad to ground all that does is it isolates the input of the voltage regulator to the pulse width modulator circuit board from any transient voltages that might happen to be carried in on the DC input and trust me folks there are plenty of those that's why I had to include that um, when I didn't have R14 and I just had a capacitor I ended up blowing that capacitor the circulating currents were so high if you if you look back through some of my earlier videos, you'll see what happened when one of those earlier when one of those capacitors exploded inside the benchtop model. So I ended up having to replace this fan motor with another one that I scrapped, and both of these have been scrapped off of um, Pentium 3 motherboards that I'm going to end up throwing away anyway. Inside, I have taken and mounted a 1,000 microfarad electrolytic capacitor 50 volt from the positive terminal on one side to the negative input terminal on the other side and even with a capacitor this large when the unit is running the circulating currents are so high that this capacitor gets warm so something tells me that uh, under an extended run this capacitor is eventually going to explode also and I'm, I'm glad it's in a nice sturdy box because uh, I, I don't want it uh, exploding and littering my bench top with electrolyte. Um, ultimately, I think what we're going to have to do is put some sort of brute force capacitor on the outside of the pulse width modulator from the cell positive to the negative input of the pulse width modulator so that we can effectively deliver the peak current that the pulse width modulator is asking for and that the cell is asking for. Okay, the last thing I want to talk to you about is how I went about mounting this heat sink. Now if you look you see that the base of the fin heat sink is quite thick and all I did was I, from the top af by, after taking the fan off the top of the heat sink I took and drilled two holes through the heat sink. One to line up with the existing screw where the MOSFET is mounted inside and the other to line up diagonally across the case someplace else uh, inside the case. I drilled it out to 760 fourths of an inch and once I drilled that out I took a number 632 tap and I tapped the heat sink itself. So now instead of having a nut on the inside of the case to hold the MOSFET in place what you see down below there is the screw head that goes the opposite direction through the through the MOSFET through the top of the case and into the base of the heat sink that's what clamps the heat sink to the case and underneath here if I can line this up correctly for the camera there you can see the screw head there for the for the second screw that's diagonally across from where the first one was drilled through those two screws now clamp the heat sink to the top of the case and right here you can see a little bit of the heat sink compound that I spread on there a nice thin layer that gives a good thermal uh, thermal bond from the exterior surface of the case to the bottom of the heat sink so when this thing is running now it doesn't get warm at all that's what I want. Zero Fossil Fuel signing out for now